Well, thank you so much. I'm surprised you all are here at 3 o'clock. I'm, I'm bare, you know, almost falling asleep and I'm really cold. So let's see if we can kick this big data thing off. So my name is Radhika and I'm with this company called MCN. And our focus has been around big data, right? So what the heck is big data? So what I'd like to do is give you a short presentation on how we look at big data, how we define it, what our solution is. But really the most important thing is use cases. It's all driven by use cases. So I almost feel like the objective behind big data is the so what, who cares, right? And I always laughed with my dad and told him I never finished my PhD because I could never answer the so what, who cares part of it. So anyway. So big data. Data is growing really, really fast. So we all know that, right? Who cares? The part that's really important is this. We all know that there's value in the data, but less than 1% of it is analyzed. So data is like dirt, guys. There's a lot of it, and it's going to grow. So what we've been doing is we've been storing it, then shifting it, and clouding it, then sifting it. Nobody cares. It's about the gold. We've got to figure out how to get to the value. And that's really the focus of what we've been trying to do. Right? So old paradigm. We've been digging it. It's like panning for gold. What you really want, and these methods search a very big part of it, right? Oh, we've got all this data. Let's sit down and search. Maybe one day we'll find something. And the process used to be where you had data, somebody could run away with it, come back maybe six months later. It's very unpredictable. You don't know if anything is going to really happen out of it. But with the amount of data that's growing, what companies want to do is they want to operationalize data. That is like an automated machine that takes the dirt, automatically gets the gold out of it, and can actually predict that, yes, this is how many ounces I'm going to get out of it you know, per day. That's the accuracy of operationalizing data. So for that, what do you need? You need an automated method. You need something that can say, you know, I'm going to collapse the, anal collapse the analysis time. I'm going to make it highly predictable. I'm going to make it highly accurate. I'm going to make it highly economical so that you know that when this data comes in, if there are 10 things that you need to know about it, maybe I'll give you 20, but I'll give you those 10 things. And run with it, because that's all the time you have in the day. Because there's more data coming, guys. Let's run. That's really the new paradigm. OK, so what is it that MCN does? Right? MCN has been focused on algorithms. And I'll kind of get into very quickly how we do what we do. But at a kind of this is my marketing slide, OK? Pattern detection platform. What we're really doing is using the patterns coming out of data to automatically get to an answer very quick. Really important, it is driven by business use cases. I will get to this over and over. That's the part about it that's so critical. Um, yes, it is automated. It's fast. It's predictable. Then the other part that's important is it, me, it applies across a, a wide variety of data. right? So let's kind of talk about data and what kinds of data there are. Data, all kinds of data, right? Social, tons of it. People are generating it. We know that. Companies are generating data. You know, that's all the enterprise stuff. But the part of the data that's growing the fastest is the machine generated. Your cell phones, all right? Every few minutes, it's giving out a ping that, you know, the mobile carriers are collecting. Your laptops, all your devices are giving out um, signals. That's where the biggest growth is. And I think this is from an IDC report that the amount of data that's machined today is about 12%. And I think it's going to be about 40% in four years. So that's really where the huge growth is coming from. So as we look at the leaders in data, kind of look at what kind of data you know, they're really analyzing. The real leaders in data will be able to go agnostic across all data types. Really important. You can't differentiate. OK, limitations of current solutions. I won't you know, belabor this. Apparently, you guys are going to have a copy of my deck, right? It's all very manual. It's search-based. You cannot search your way out of big data. It is impossible. You don't know what you're searching for. And that's funda search is fundamentally flawed. And any process that is manually intensive, any process that puts the burden on a human being is a game stop. It's not going to work. It has to be done through automation. You're better off getting a B minus automation solution than getting one really good, what they call this unicorn data scientist, because that guy doesn't exist. All right? So, and also the solutions today only look at certain kinds of data types. And with this one, I'll kind of quickly talk about, you know, the the numerical, most of the solutions now focus on the numerical side of data. The non-numerical is actually the part that's growing the fastest. All right.
This is another very quick view, and I thought this would be relevant to our discussions here, right? So when I look at the data stack, I kind of look at it as data at the bottom, all these different kinds of data, and then you have the infrastructure stack. How are you going to store it, stock, you know, and process it? Over that is the algorithmic layer. Then come the use cases and the sectors. That's really what I call the value layer. That's where the value gets generated, and that's the part that we are focusing on. So what MCN's done is we've created a suite of algorithms that actually run across multiple sectors, multiple use cases, but the end point is always the same. We will give you an answer that you can run with, and it's automated. All right? Okay. Very quickly, uh, algorithm is based on um, graphs, very large graphs. The data that comes in, every data value is a token. The tokens, if the data values occur simultaneously, they get connected with an arc. So, you know, that's one way of actually representing data. The graph data model is only a representation. That's only the beginning, right? So that's not the end. What needs to come on top of it, and also, by the way, quickly, structured or unstructured doesn't matter. If it's structured, wow, you've actually done entity resolution for me, yay, that's awesome. If it's unstructured, then it kind of becomes my problem. You know, that's kind of beyond today's talk. Um, so once this graph is built, this is where the magic really comes in. It's the algorithms. What the algorithms need to do is race through the graph, and there are a standard set of graph problems. When you solve them, you're actually solving business problems. Right? So one of these examples is, you know, in this large graph, it's almost like the graph will break apart like constellations. Those could be actually your market segments. And there's no query in database that will give that to you. All right? So let's kind of continue this idea of, you know, problems in the graph world really, you know, relate to problems in the business world. One of them is these loosely federated community. If, if the graph problem solves it, you actually know how your market segment breaks out. There are other kind of applications for this. The other one is cliques, stuff that are really tightly connected together. In a product, that's actually all the choices that the customers are buying together, right? Another one is actually knowing how people are connected. By the way, with the data, there's this other thing called metadata. I won't even talk about it, but it's almost like the ghost of data. The metadata part of data is just as important. So as we do pattern detection on data, we're also using the metadata because there's that entire parallel universe that you can leverage to find out not just what's being said, but who's saying it, and where are these people, and how are they moving about, and what are the migration patterns, right? And then the last thing is, you know, with graphs, you can do this beautiful thing called detecting substitute nodes. That's like doppelgangers, right? Two people who are exactly the same, but they're pretending to be something different. And in banking, that's ID theft, fraud, whole bunch of things. In language, it's actually synonyms. And in marketing, it's product substitutes. So you see, it's the same algorithms, same use cases. But you know, as you look across verticals, you're automatically solving a different set of problems. So with this, what I'm going to do is quickly run through. I'm going to jump some of these uh, slides. I'm going to jump, you know, walk you through a couple of use cases. This one is. Um, an Intel application. So the problem that was posed to us is lots of data. It's coming from social media. It's coming from chat rooms, IRC chat rooms. How can we leverage that to use pattern detection to automatically surface conversations that we need to pay attention to and use those conversations to actually surface the bad actors, right? So the first layer is the data, different silos of data. Over that, what the pattern detection does is it starts to look for patterns of words without actually being given a word that, you know, and that's search, right? So this is really an automatic discovery. How do you let the system come back and tell you, you know, you need to pay attention to this? That's really what the magic is about. Over that, once you can get these conversations, how do you rank these conversations? And last, how do you use the metadata to actually figure out the influence network? Right? So we did this, and this is actually an example of an influence, you know, a set of people involved in a conversation that the intel could actually backdoor into the silent cell on social media. So this person never spoken before, 
but how you really get to them is using pattern detection across data. All right, so we did something very similar to this with the Atlanta Police Department. And about 12 months ago, two gangs merged, the Bloods and the Crips. So but, you know, there was this conversation pattern that the system raises up. It says, you know, there's this new word called Famerica. Never heard this before. And there are these 22 guys, and they're flying the red, white, and blue flag. I don't know what, you know, what to make out of it. And so the gang detectives look at it, and they say, well, half of them are from the Bloods, and the other half are from the Crips. And 48 hours ahead to a gang merger, there, that was intelligence, right? So that's really the kind of stuff we're trying to do. So am I out of time? Oh, okay. Okay, so how do you take the same kind of um, algorithms and apply it to a slightly different data set, right? So this is network traffic. As I told you, all your machines are giving out data and all your chief security officers for all your companies are kind of worrying about where is the threat really coming from? So having said that, you know, we, we always hear this phrase, needle in a haystack and uh, anomaly detection like it only happens once. Guys, bad stuff that happens doesn't just happen once. In fact, the guy who's doing the bad stuff really doesn't want to get caught. The beauty is he's under the radar and the pattern is four, five, six, seven things that come together they happen over and over again. It's kind of the way I used to steal m lunch money, right? Every Monday, if my mom gave me a little bit extra and I knew where the tuck shop was, it's five things and you, she never caught on to it. That's, how, that's really how fraud happens. If the guy does it once and he sticks out, he's actually failed. What he's trying to do, like a good virus, he's trying to stay inside and not make you sick. That's really what's so hard in detecting this. So what does pattern detection do? Our system, as it builds this entire graph, there is a natural state of probabilities of connections, how old this talks to each other. And when that starts to shift, it says, wait, this is unusual, like the Famerica. I've not seen this before. And these 12 guys on this side and this side, they didn't talk to each other before. This is a new connection. And it's not happening just once, it's building up. Guess what? That's exactly the pattern for network intrusion. Right, so your machines, the way they talk to each other, it's kind of like the way you guys talk to each other and the way your cell phones talk to each other. There's a method to it. And when it starts to break that method, then a system needs to catch it automatically through all that volume of data and say, here are 20 things, take a look at it because it's the beginning of something. And that's how it always begins, right? So the use cases, you know, typically network intrusion are, we call it surprising. Surprising means it's like Fan America. This should not be happening. How do you automatically detect that? Then second, you know, the machines actually have a way they talk to each other. How do you de detect the network of machines and how do you detect who's influencing the conversations when they talk to each other? Because that's really how viruses and spam really come. Very similar, it's just like Twitter accounts, now it's machine accounts. So the network data comes in and you know, using graph analytics, what we're really doing is, it's like the reverse of Google. We're giving you the patterns of machines you know, and telling you where the attack patterns are really happening from. What you can do is have that going through your system where every six hours, every three hours, or every 30 minutes, these patterns emerge, and you can either put it into your you know, downstream system, something like a Splunk, Sumo Logic, or have someone actually review it. But what you've really done is you've taken big data and converted it to small data, right? So normally, what's the process today? Somebody sits there and queries you know, Splunk and says, is it this? Is it this machine? Is this what's going on? And you just never get through it. Okay, so this is kind of a, you know, a look at how do we look at the machines. I mean, we literally pretend that, pretend that the machines are people, right? So the machines are networking just like people network. And when they're going to start attacking, they will actually create a gang. And that's really how they orchestrate an attack. Okay, so this is, you know, just a quick view of, you know, you thought the machines were connected this way, but how are they actually connecting themselves to create, a, you know, to create an attack, right? So this really comes from using the patterns of the log files, the conversations of the log files, to reverse engineer back into the network of the machines, all right? So you know, with this, I think I'm going, to, I'm going to stop, and I'll take questions you know, when we get onto the panel. Thank you so much.
Thank you.